we're, well, we're on. Okay, we're live. Hello, and welcome to the Independent Publishers of New England weekly, weekly broadcast entitled Ask the Experts. On the show, we interview different people in the world of independent publishing here in New England in all sorts of fields, in marketing, publicity, in copyright law, in printing, and design, and writing, and absolutely everything. And today, we're here with Rachel L. McIntosh, who is publishing a series. There's Rachel, a wonderful woman. Um, publishing a series uh, based, it's a fictional series based largely on her experience. And one of the things I really love about working on this show is that I just yet to meet someone who has the same experience in independent publishing as someone else. It's a completely wide open field. Lots of different people are involved in it. And Rachel's journey into publishing is something that I find personally fascinating. The idiosyncrasies of the ways that people get involved in what they do is just, it's just really interesting to me. So, um, welcome, Rachel. Thank you for joining Thank us today. Thank you for having me. I do appreciate this very much. Thank you. Okay, so Rachel, we have behind you your three, the, the covers for your three books, The Little Yellow Stickies, Bubbles Will Pop, and The Big Show. That's um, right. And, then and the whole also, series is called Security Through Absurdity. Okay. And how, uh, mm -hmm, yes. Yeah, because I used to work for a defense contractor, and... I went to art school. So me going to work for a defense contractor was like oil and water. And it was just, it was all mixed up for me for about six years. But while I was there, I really tried hard to do a good job. And by the time I left, I was in charge of five different divisions, marketing communications. Uh -huh. So <laughs> but I, I got to see a lot of things. Um, and I was there during... 9-11 in the lead up to the Iraq war and mm -hmm. I got to see and witness a lot of things that were not um, part of the official narrative of 9-11 and it made me realize that so much of the warfare stuff that goes on in our country how it's it's interlinked with corporate land and um, things are crazy I mean it's literally crazy so and what you see, oh, the other thing is too, is what you see on TV isn't necessarily the real story. Everything's been jazzed mm -hmm. up a little bit to get it on TV. So I felt really passionate about getting what I saw and witnessed um, out of me and onto paper. And it almost acted like a, um, like a life, life insurance because everybody in my first book, Little Yell Stickies, that's the part of the series where my main character, which is based on me, um, was working at that defense contractor. Everybody in that main book, that first book, Little Yell Stickies, they have the same initials as the people in real life. So if you find me dead in a ditch, you're gonna go <laughs> look at Little Yellow Stickies and you're gonna look up the initials of everybody, go to my LinkedIn profile and then start your investigation there <laughs> well that's a heartwarming cheery little start to the interview yeah, but it was, thank you honestly though but because i knew that pe most people really couldn't care less about history or anything else but i wanted to document that time in history but i also wanted to make it relatable and i wanted um people to like really like this character so that they would get involved with the story and i made the story funny so mm -hmm. you're flipping the pages as you go. It's not, it's, it's a bizarre kind of humor. And it's, I think it's kind of a Gen X kind of, you know, I, that's how old I am. Gen X kind of, it's almost snarky, but it's not snarky. But if you're reading it, you'll, you'll <laughs> burst out laughing at certain parts of time. Okay. Well, one of the things just in terms of publishing and literature that I really like is that you just identified the genre that you're writing in. And the audience that that you're writing, you know, you kind of had in mind when you were writing, and that's a, that's a fantastic type of awareness that I think a lot of people who I've met in independent publishing they don't consider that. And I think that's our no, no, one, I didn't. I wasn't thinking. I was never even thought to be a writer ever. I just knew I had to sit down and type this stuff out. The <laughs> thing that happened is by the time I went and typed all this stuff out, it was it took me about two years maybe of every single night 
typing. I put the kids to bed. I have twins. I put them to bed and I type till about two in the morning. And wow. Get up and start the whole day again. And when I handed in my manuscript, mm -hmm. the publishers, which happened to be iUniverse, because I didn't know anything about publishing. I just went online and said, oh, I'm going to publish a book. And I did a little Google search. And, oh, the universe, the author house. Oh, I'm going to do my dil ju dil ju diligence. Do diligence. I'm going to call both of them, and I'm going to see if I can pit them against each other and give me a better deal. Long story short, they're the same darn company, right? So I asked them. I literally asked them. I asked them. I said, are you guys part of the same group Ex lib what is it? Ex libris, um, I universe, author house. Are you guys all the same thing? Because you guys are all offering like the same packages, <laughs> terrible prices. And the guy told me, he said, "Yeah, we're pretty close." Yeah. And I found out afterward that author house actually, by time I went through the whole thing, mm -hmm. I was getting my manuscripts back from author house when I had signed my contract with I universe. Um, <laughs> and adding, I mean, adding. on top of it all, I spent a ton of money, I just a ton of money, and they literally, we had so many problems. For instance, the first book, Little Yellow Stickies, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Little Yellow Stickies, <laughs> came back. This is artwork that was done by somebody else outside of this organization at Universe. I had the artwork sent it. They printed it. They changed the artwork to say little yellow stickers. And I was like, and it was, I also got the hardbound copies too, right? Because this is cool. You're paying the money. You get the hardbound copies. You get the soft cover. <laughs> I got the hardbound copies too. Had little yellow stickers. I was like, where is this coming from? Turned out that this whole thing was getting done up in the Philippines or something. So if I wanted to talk to anybody about that printing problem, it was a JPEG. I was like, how could you touch that? So they must have, they did something to the JPEG, right? Right. So, hmm. um, yeah. So I had to talk to people in the Philippines who now were trying to know what a sticky is compared to a sticker. <laughs> And it was this big thing. I was going out of my mind because I'd done so much promotion to get this thing to the audience. Right. For September 11th, because as you can see, it's all about, that's not, all, it's not all about September 11th, but it's definitely a critical mm -hmm. part of this book. So I'd done a lot mm -hmm. of marketing. And that's the other thing too, iUniverse does. They get, they get you on the hook. They're like, hey, we want to do some marketing for you because we know you have an awesome book. And then you start, they start getting on you about marketing and they start throwing these marketing packages at you. And you're like, maybe I should. Oh my gosh, I know nothing about this. I didn't do it, thank God, but it's thousands of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. but, they, but they were relentless. They would call me like every other night for this marketing wow. package. Yeah, it was out of control. Wow. And um, I had to like get to call people in the Philippines and everywhere else to get this marketing person off my back. Wow, wow. So long story short, I did all this marketing myself to get this kind of propped up for September 11th. And the next thing you know, it gets released with stickers on the thing and everything. Get it fixed in time for September. And Amazon's not carrying it. I was like, called iUniverse. I said, where is the book? And they said, well, it's Amazon's problem. I said, well, I contacted Amazon. Not that you can talk to a human at Amazon, but I contacted <laughs> Amazon. And they said, it's iUniverse's fault. So now I had to just they both were blaming each other for it and they you know for not being there for september so um i said you know what you guys suck you both really suck i'm publishing it myself so i published it myself as can you see this entropy, entropy press entropy press okay great because the whole thing had fallen apart right so that's mm -hmm. what entropy means, things falling to its natural state of disorder. I, I, I love your choice of name for your publishing house. Right. So okay. entropy press. Mm -hmm. So I published it myself. There it is on the back. There. So I published it myself after I got out of that contract. And I broke it. I, you know, it's all, this was originally written as one giant book. This is how thick the book is. A teeny tiny little typeface 
Mm -hmm. this is the whole entire thing. But when it's broke, I've also broken into parts. We've got the first part, we got the middle part, we got the end part. So we got the story arc like that. But I had to pull it all apart. Okay, a, a, a question that I've just received here yeah. is, when you started writing, did you have any idea how long this would be, how long the story was? Did you have any nah, idea? Nah, I was just like, oh, I'm going downstairs, I'm typing, blah, 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 blah. It was like vomiting out my fingers. And I was just going on, and it was literally longer than what I've got now, mm -hmm. when I had to chop out lots of parts, because I didn't, I never wrote before, I just... Right. And wrote. how did... You how did you decide to divide it into three? And then how did you decide to put it back into one? And what were the decisions? Okay, so this is, this is how it went. I had this giant compendium of verbal vomit that I had given right. to the And they said mm -hmm. to iUniverse, to their credit, they said, let's chop this down so it'll be easier for people to digest. And I said, okay, that makes sense. So we chopped it down. How I chopped it down is I took basically the timeline of the whole entire thing because mm -hmm. we've done it like, oh, just follow this one character in one book, follow this other character in another book, follow. but just decided to do the timeline and chop it. And so the first book is just the beginning of the timeline. The second mm -hmm. book is the middle of the timeline. Then from there, I made sure to weave through the characters in to make sure that their character didn't just die off the, the set. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Yep. So that right. was going on. And then the other thing that was going on was I was purging stuff that just didn't support the whole, the whole, you know, if it wasn't, if it was just like on a side, it usually got thrown. So there was probably another one of these books that got tossed out of the whole thing. Okay. All right. Oh, so an entire one. Well, um, and let's see other questions. Um, sorry, the dog next to me is barking. Um, how was yeah, it? What, <laughs> yeah, they do. Um, I noticed behind you, you have the signs from Amazon and Goodreads. I just want to bring attention to those uh, for a second. So Rachel McIntosh is now my favorite author. The series of modern historical fiction is very entertaining, funny, and timely. And that was a five out of five stars on Amazon. And then yeah. Goodreads as well. Best new series. Oh, when, 2014, yeah. 2014, fantastic. And are you now, so you've published the three behind you and the one, yeah. the one, um, the three books together in one, are you publishing that now currently or have you just published that recently? This one literally, I just got this like three uh, weeks ago maybe. I, I got the proof like a month ago and then maybe more than that. This whole, yeah, then typesetting, that's a whole nother thing. If you don't know how to do this at all i learned a lot what i learned is there's like five million different types of editors that's okay. the first thing i thought there was just like oh just go in and see if there needs to be a comma oh no 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 there's not <laughs> that at all there's like developmental editors that read it and go hmm this this needs pumped up and maybe you should make it a little more graphic like tell me what he's doing is he holding a coffee cup is he like make it more visual in people's minds that's like a developmental editor Mm -hmm. there's, okay. there's the grammar type of editors that go through and then you've got the fine that literally there's a million type of editors. So if you're going to publish something yourself on create space, mm -hmm. that would be the website you'd go to, to actually do this, go to create. Mm -hmm. space. But before you do that, get yourself just right. Blah, 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 then go get yourself some editors, get a developmental editor editor. If this is the first time you've ever written, because mm -hmm. what I was doing when I first did, I knew everybody's point of view. So I was coming from everybody's point of view. I had all these different points of view and nobody could follow the story. What this giant thing that I'd written. Mm -hmm. I knew what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, and how, how did you find editors? What was the process you used in order to find good editors? Well, the good thing is that iUniverse uses, they don't even own their own editors. They're using editors from everybody else. Harper Collins, they're, they're like, um, contractors they're using editors that are using freelance editors they could be coming from anywhere so okay. those those editors like the developmental editor was awesome i really liked her but you you don't get to talk to them every your manuscript goes out and then it comes back with notes in the sidebar and it's only the first the person's first name which you don't even know if it's a, the same if it's a real person right so um 
but I knew I liked her because she said that in my first book, she said the motel scene, which I have to tell you, it's a little cringeworthy, my motel scene in this first book. It's a little cringeworthy. And it's mm-hmm. not sex. It's the she wrote back, she said, This is the best sex scene without sex I've ever read. <laughs> that's a, that's a good compliment. Yeah. That's, that's nice because writing. It's sex, but it's equally as like, what the heck is going on? So she was, she's like, I cannot stop laughing. And I said, that's exactly what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. So, so we were on the same page, like as terms of, she got where my humor was coming from. So mm-hmm. that, she helped me a lot. The, then when we got to the editing with the like commas and the spelling and all that stuff, it all fell apart, literally fell apart. So when I took it all over myself, um, I ended up, most of my team now is in the UK, to tell you the truth. Okay. Yeah. And how, how did that happen? How did you, um, how did you find all of the different editors who are, you well, started with why you, universe? Well, right now, the, I, I used an editor in the UK, which I thought was good, better than what I had. She was better than what I had. But it turned out she had some vitamin <laughs> vitamin D deficiency or something. And she was like completely out, out for the count. And she missed all sorts of stuff. And people that read my book and really loved my book, one of them is an editor to a financial newsletter. And she was like, I'm going to be your editor. I said, oh, wow. Right? So now right. that woman is my editor for real. Mm-hmm. Um, but I really want get back to that developmental editor when I do my fourth book, because I'm going to do another book in this series. Um, this It's Little Ale Stickies, Bubbles Will Pop, and then the big show, the next one is called The Peanut Butter Pipeline. It's the same characters. Um, so I really appreciated that developmental editor. She was great. But um, that was it. You know. Okay. Okay. Great. And then another question that has come in is, what have you done to get reviews? What have you done to get reviews and publicity? Oh, okay. Reviews. Well, first off, if you're just starting to write and you think, oh, I'm going to write a book, get the cover kind of done first, right? Know what Mm -hmm. your genre is first. Get Mm -hmm. the cover done next. Then to get the reviews, you go start going to these other authors on Facebook. This is what I did. Go to other authors on Facebook that are sort of in that genre. Mm-hmm. And ask them if you'd like to, to like read this book or do a review. A lot of authors really will, especially the aspiring authors, because they know how hard it is to get reviews. They'll review right. the book and then you review theirs. And then you're like review buddies. And next thing you know, they're, you're doing reviews all the time. But nonetheless, wow. that's how you, it starts. That's how it gets started. Mm-hmm. Um, then the other thing that you could do too is – for publicity, I did a lot of um, stuff with just regular press releases. You go to okay. PR blog, mm-hmm. and um, you just start sending out press releases that there's this author, she's got this book about this thing, and it's in this genre, and it's it's awesome. And especially when I did the um, the Goodreads, when I hit Goodreads Best New Series, oh, that was press release really like nuts. I was just doing that, and so then. Then when people started to contact me at my website that they liked the book or whatever, they would, you know, they'd say, oh, I love your book. I'd say, oh, thank you so much. Would you write a review? So then they'd say, sure. And it, sometimes they don't like, oh, I don't know what to say. You just say, oh, how about something like this? And you just send over like a little blurby blurb, like this, you know, something. And I go, just kind of touch it up. It's, you know, don't go nuts. You don't have to be professional. Just say, I like this. I like this character. I like the way it was written, whatever. Mm-hmm. And they will usually take it because they love the book and they'll do it. So that's how I got the reviews. Um, So this PR, I have to say PR log is excellent. PR log? PR, PR log. It's free. I think it's Mm -hmm. .org, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what I did a lot of my stuff on. Then I do Twitter Mm -hmm. and I do Facebook. If you can get, here's, I heard this once and I think it's true. You need at least a thousand people following you on Facebook, at least a thousand people following you on Twitter. Um, Once you do that, then it kind of like starts snowballing and doing its own thing. Goodreads, I have to say, I have not embraced Goodreads, which is pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Lots of people are like, I'm like, I don't, I kind of don't get it. 
Like, that's just me. So it's, if you could do Goodreads, and I hear a lot of people have awesome success with Goodreads. I've got, I've just not learned it or something. Because every time I go, I'm like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. So, that's, you know, just do what you know. Like, don't, don't try to kill yourself. And then the other thing, too, is that you could hide. There's these people that, like, they're online internet professionals for marketing. You could hire mm -hmm. one of them. Mm -hmm. okay. I, did, I did that for a while. Um, that helps. Right. You, know what, you know why that helps? Because there's all sorts of Facebook groups. There's, mm -hmm. like, ebook groups, and there's indie publishers groups. There's, like, a million book groups on Facebook. So if you can hire somebody, just sit there for a month and like hit every group three times a day with like your book and a thing. Oh, wow, that really helps too. <laughs> okay, great. Um, thanks for that. That's, uh, uh, you've just answered a question that I hear a lot. Um, another question that's come in is what did, what did setting up your Entropy Press, what did that involve? Uh, was that a complicated process? Was it simple? What can you take us through the steps of your decision to say like, okay, this big universe, um, the ex libra universe thing, it, it's not working for me. I think I have to set up my own uh, well, press and then, and then having a press and publishing. What, was, what happened in that in term? Oh, well, actually it was kind of easy because this Entropy Press logo, mm -hmm. I've been hauling this around since the 90s. I used to do um, that. I lived in Boston and at that time I had this thing called Entropy Press and it was a website and it was right when websites were new, like hyper like people literally didn't know what hyperlinks were. So somebody explained to me what a hyperlink was. I was like, then why can't we do this on our website like this? And I was like, why not? I, so I got the HTML for dummies and we, I started um, publishing hard copies of I would put put it this way. I would put out a word like salt, salt. I'd say on the internet. I just email my mailing list or whoever, and I'd say send me whatever you have about salt. Anything, anything. Poems, paintings. I was getting stuff about biblical references, um, arms treaties. I was getting all sorts of stuff. So then I would collage them into mm -hmm. an actual collage. The collage turned out to be 13 feet long, double sided, wrapped around a five pound canister of salt. Oh my God, that's brilliant. With the URL and it was a, it looked like the Morton salt girl with the umbrella and I, right. I had the URL on it and I left it at um, the airport in Boston, Logan, Logan airport. And wow. of course you couldn't do that now. So I was living yeah. in the airport. So this got trotted all over the world. <laughs> so now wow. it was issues. I was starting to get, you know, get submissions from all over the world and right. kind of grew in my, um, uh, like the next one was uh, the mental episode. And that was a big blueprint, an actual blueprint drawing of the brain. Uh -huh. Back was the collaged items that people had sent me. Wow. And then what I did was, so that was, that was the hard copy. Mm -hmm. it, it, it accompanied this website. So the website, you could go to the website and you would know which issue you were in by the color scheme. It was only two colors per issue. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, the salt episode was seafoam green, black or white. And the mental episode, I believe, what was that? Blue. It was blue because of the blueprint of the brain. So it was blue, white, and black. And you just click on words within the, within a Peace. poem. Peace. Yeah, you know, but you would, <laughs> you know, click on within the poem and it would take you to other stuff. Sometimes it would take you out to Tupperware or some to so wherever we were just messing around with you. I wanted it to be like a choose your own adventure because that's what hyperlinks were, right? Because it was right. totally like, right. you would just end up weird old places. You could just go anywhere on the internet. Now it's like everything's like funneled. Like they know your demographic. They know you want to see right. the commercials. They know. So it wasn't like that then. So that was the first time people were able to, do stuff like that. So I had stickers. I was doing guerrilla marketing all around the um, Boston. I was, it was every, I had little, cool. I had condoms. I had condoms made up with this logo on it. And yeah. it had, the rapper said, it's coming, it's coming. And I was leaving those at like the, the clubs. But meanwhile, so like when I did finally write this book, 
I was like, well, screw it. I'm going to pull Entropy Press out of mothballs and I'm going to do it myself. So I started with that logo. I knew I could do this, right? Um, I got myself somebody who knew how to do create space because I was just like, what, 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 who the fuck? I didn't know what to do. So I got create somebody who create space. Mm -hmm. Then I, of course, I had already hired somebody to do my artwork. So that graphic designer is with me um, mm -hmm. still. The create space person is with me still. That person's in the UK. Um, mm -hmm. the, the editor is here in not far from my house because she's this editor of this newsletter. Um, and then the PR person is also in the UK, which I utilize to help with the pinging of the Facebook groups and sending out the PR log stuff. Mm -hmm. So, wow. Yeah. Fantastic. And in terms of all the technical details of creating a publishing company, in terms oh, you of, mean like going to get the tax number and stuff? Was that just um, like yeah. someone just asked me that this morning, which is yeah, why. No, it's a pain in, you know, it's one of those things. You, I think you have to pay two different fees, I mm -hmm. think. It's one of those mm -hmm. things. You go down, you get your tax number, do what you got to do. It's, it's literally you get the strip of paper and it's, you know. <laughs> Okay, so it's basically just going down to the town hall and uh, saying that you want to create a company and filling out the forms that they ask you to fill yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Wow, what a journey. Um, I, one of the things that I, I didn't know that about the art project, that is really fun. Oh, um, we could, I could suck the art of a room, as you know. I could talk about that all day. <laughs> okay, one of the things that I thought was fascinating when you first told me about this project was, it, it was something that, that I, I'm just interested in, is how people end up in the positions that they end up. And, and I remember you telling me that you were an art student and you had these friends from e MIT who were showing you how to use email. And so you were, you know, communicating an email with them. And because I remember saying, but Rachel, how did you end up from art school into a, you know, a defense contractor? It, it just, it doesn't seem logical to me. It doesn't, I, that, it, that's, that's kind of the joy of this book because the character in this book, she's so clueless. She's smart, but she's clueless. Mm -hmm. and, that, and it makes you the reader of this series. Now you are relating to her because you, the reader is smart, but she's mm -hmm. clueless about this defense stuff. And she, you, as the reader, you're kind of clueless about this. So I feel like the reader really can relate to the main character in my books. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I would definitely, I would definitely agree with that. And the other thing that I noticed is that your books are on the summer reading list in a number of high schools in Rhode Island and Connecticut. And That's how, right. How did that happen? Because I'm in part of a group called the Association of Rhode Island Authors. Okay. And that's another thing. If you're a new author, get to your local um, book association or club or something. Um, they have a group that was very into like the children's books. Mm -hmm. okay. They were trying to get the children's books into the school system. And I said, well, wait a second. I said, does it have to be just children's books? I said, this is kind of historical. We're talking about 9-11. And I mean, there's no real sex in my books. And there's, it's not, I mean, if kids are reading Fifty Shades of Grey, they, you know, high school, they, they're <laughs> yeah. going to be able to handle this. She said, yeah. yeah, take it, throw it in the thing. So next thing you know, it goes into the pile with to go out to the Rhode Island link system. All right, link. It's, this, it's a, a library stack of books basically that gets shared through all these library systems and mm -hmm. then they put up um, the summer reading list wow so, right wow. that's wonderful yeah. okay um, so now the next thing is this whole thing is going to be made into a film so i've been working on a script now wow that's brilliant what, yeah I'm like did i ever think i'd be writing scripts no so this is <laughs> awesome Rachel, your story is fantastic, and I'm sure there, like, you can fill out a million more details, and I love talking to you. To anyone who's listening, if you want to follow Rachel on Twitter or Facebook, you are in for just a fascinating, awareness, awake, fun ride, so I highly recommend that. Um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that we have a number of events coming up here at IPNI, and Rachel is coordinating. Um, thanks to Rachel, because I was trying to do that, but I had too many things. 
too many irons in the fire. So Rachel took over NILA, the New England uh, Library Association's um, conference. And could you mention just a quick thing, one or two things about oh, that, where it's taking actually, place when? Okay, this is actually a very cool thing to be involved with. All of the librarians in New England, they're going to be invited to come to this conference. And it's a conference so that they can get their jobs done better. Like they'll learn about library systems and computers and they'll hear other people talking. But me, our, there's like our group, which is IPNI, which is right behind you, of which I am a part of as well, um, will be there. And they'll be presenting books to the librarians that we would recommend that they buy for their collection. They won't, I will be there. I'll be the feet on the ground. I'll be picking up the books, showing them to the librarians based on what the librarians are telling me that they're interested in. Oh, you're interested in children's book. Oh, we got this over here. Oh, you're from Rhode Island. Oh, look at these, all the Rhode Island people we have, you know, that sort of stuff. And um, it will, I think, really be a good way for you to get your product and your name and your brand in front of these librarians who are able to purchase for their collection. This is an easy way to make some money, especially if you don't get hooked up with the librarian here at this conference that I'm talking about. You can walk into your library, sell your book. Every time I've walked into a library, I've sold my book because I'm like, oh, a local author. Did you know that each one of those libraries in your state, they're not all part of the same budget. They all have their own little budgets. So you can go to the library in one city or town and just march right down to the next town and to the next library and sell them the same book. Okay, so, great. Nonetheless, this is, so the NILA conference is really cool. I think, I, since I'm gonna be there, of course it's gonna be cool, right? So <laughs> yes, right, so with, um, IPNI, go to the IPNI website, go to the events page and look for NILA, N-E-L-A and get your book into that show because it's really, it's well worth it. Okay, great. And um, do exhibitors have to attend? No, or, no, you, uh, you relax, you relax. <laughs> wow, it's there's gonna nothing be better. Me and some other people from IPNI, mm -hmm. we will be professionally handing your book to the librarians. And we'll okay. be putting it up like crazy. As you can see, it's like a gift I have. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, Rachel. I will probably be there as well, depending. It's a busy week for us at IPNI, that particular week. The show is the, is it um, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday the, in October? The, what are the dates? The 21st? 20, I know. Uh, oh, the 14th, 15th, 16th. After the Boston Book Festival. Right. The, our conference, NILA, is October 16th through the 18th. And that just means if you right. got your book there, I will be there the whole time presenting your book. We were also okay, great. Um, a little folder to like stuff into their program with all the books, like with little book blurbs. So that's another way you get advertising in there too. So I think okay. it's worth it. Okay, thank you. And that's um, $55 to register a book, is that correct? That's right. And registration ends September 23rd? That sounds good. Okay, sounds great. And then we have other events coming up as well. I'm sorry, I don't have the dates right in front of me. But coming up very soon, in, in a couple of weeks, we have the NEBA, New England Independent Booksellers Association. That's taking place in, in um, Provincetown, Providence, right? Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah, right over here. Yep, right down, around the corner. And then we have that busy week in October where we have Boston Book Festival, um, uh, followed by NILA, followed by Boston Book Festival in Copley Square, and then NILA is in Davenport, correct? And Danvers. then up Danvers. Danvers, and then Portsmouth, New Hampshire, we have our conference. So it's going to be a very, very busy season for us here at IPNI. Please contact us on Facebook, look at our website, register if you'd like to register. There are still a few places left. Um, and any questions, let us know. So, Rachel, thank you so much. It was such a pleasure talking with you. I mean, hey, I, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, I can't wait to talk to you again. All right. So, if you would like to get a hold of Rachel again, um, she's on, you know, look for Entropy uh, Press, and she's on Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn. And again, I highly recommend following her. Just fascinating, fascinating, fun information about what's going on in the world today in the world of 
politics and the world of business and the world of finance, literature, art, you it's name just it. A it's a random it's Solomon Gundy of like everything, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Then we're going to sign off. And thanks again, Rachel. We'll talk to you very, very soon. All right. Thank you so much.